It's October 12th at 5.34 p.m. One thing I'll note just to begin with is that I'm watching the prepper reports as usual. And none of them, if they're in, they're Canadian or American, are getting their sources of information from anywhere reliable about the Ukraine war. In other words, they're using, it's all inside Western media reporting. And while they might be, the preppers might be useful in terms of local conditions, they have no idea whatsoever because they're in the echo chamber of the Western media system. They have no idea what's going on in Ukraine, which is the Russians are systematically destroying the energy grid and everything else in the country, as well as Belarus is preparing troops to invade from the north. So this is a two-front war, even though, as usual, President Pinhead, or whatever you want to call him, is announcing that we're going to continue feeding all as many weapons as Ukraine needs to be to, till the end of uh, till they're virtually extinct, and misreporting on the fact that the Russian army has an endless or military has an endless supply of weapons and weapons being created that will demolish Ukraine at any time, just like over the last three days. They withheld the attack up until the point when the UK sabotaged and blew up the bridge linking Crimea and Russia. Those reports are coming in from Europe as well by reporters, intrepid reporters in war zones who exist outside the mainstream media and are invariably reliable as they've always been because they are on the ground in the places where this is happening. Just saying for anybody who cares to be plugged into this grim reality that America is purposely pushing the world into a nuclear conflagration along with the soaring interest rates, I mean, the soaring inflation that's coming out of the ratcheting up slowly of interest rates and now halting them as, as it's just pushing and pushing and pushing the debt bubble to the point where it's going to implode. Maybe it'll all happen at the same time. I don't know, but it sure looks that way to me. Meanwhile, let's go to some real news. Let me see if I can cue that up. Changes from people kind of like giving you a cynical look like whose side are you really on to uh, people just outright um, ending ending that friendship or that professional relationship because they don't want to have anything to do with you. Maybe our next guest can relate to this. Actor and comedian Rob Schneider joins yeah. us right here. How are you? Uh, great to see you, Rob. Yeah. Uh, Finally have you on the couch. Thank you. It's you good to be. Across I, yeah, yeah. The street. What's your reaction to Tulsi Gabbard doing what she did yesterday? I, it shouldn't be such a shock. We don't get ten parties. You get two. Right. You know? And I, I really feel like I don't want I don't want the, the you know Democratic Party trying to run my life. And there's not one aspect of your life that they don't want to interfere with. So I, I had it with them. So I got out of California and moved to the slightly freer state of Arizona. Slightly. <laughs> lot, your journey is similar, though. You were a Democrat. And yeah. then you yeah. have to be in San Francisco. Of, of right. course. So well, what, yeah. what was it that changed your point of view? Well, I just, I mean, literally, there wasn't, I mean, taxes. <laughs> no, there, there wasn't one part of, of uh, <clears throat> business. I mean, Newsom pushed me over the edge. Right. I mean, it's just like, um, it, I just don't think your life gets better there. It gets worse. I mean, um, I, you know what it was? It was like, uh, there was, um, in San Francisco, they said, you had to remove, I was living in San Francisco, I, I had it made there, it's like, it's on the cable car and everything, I had a rooftop, it's, this is the place where I'm going to live forever. And they said, you have to have the toilets removed from your house. And I said, what? I, what? Yeah, I don't have toilets in front of my house. It was flower pots. Right. They made me remove all the flower pots. So, it just got crazier and crazier. And maybe I'm looking at this all wrong. 
San Francisco either has a huge homeless problem or a gigantic camping success story. <laughs> Why that is being pushed on the people of the world? I have been raging about it for weeks. And the lie is very simple. But are we raising rates aggressively? They've been doing this for months. Well, it isn't working. It's, it's completely ineffective, and you and I knew it would be from day one. From day one. But the lie, it, the lie keeps getting pushed on people, and the lie keeps getting bigger. What are we witnessing? Well, it's a phenomenon that, well, we've seen repeated multiple times in history. When a lie is told often enough and big enough, it becomes real. People start to believe it's true, and I think that's really what's going on here. The lie, very, very simply, you know what I'm going to tell you, is central banks here raising rates, raising the overnight rate, it's going to control inflation. Well, it hasn't worked, and it's not even meant to work. Let me ask you this. How does a central bank control inflation? How, if they really were serious about controlling inflation, what what tools do they have to do it? Believe it or not, the Federal Reserve has a tool here. And no one's talking about it. It's not getting the slightest mention anywhere from a Fed president, from the Fed chairman, from a politician, from not a single not one single financial channel here, you know, there are experts over there. No one's talking about it, but we're gonna talk about it right here. We understand you and I, because again, I've been screaming from rooftops about this for, for a while. The issue here with rising inflation is because we are in a currency free fall. Currencies are losing their purchasing power. At the same time, you have central banks continuing to inflate using puppet governments as a tool to do that. And what am, I, what am I talking about? Well, let's fund this project. Let's fund this act, this war, this warp speed vaccine. Uh, and then there's a new crisis coming up that they're gonna have to fund too. Did you hear about that one? You know, I'll touch on that real quick. The long COVID uh, issues here, people who have, uh, have been affected by COVID, and now they're, they're experiencing these long-term effects, it's gonna require billions, billions of dollars in spending. Oh yeah, it's another avenue, people, to continue to inflate. Now, going back to the tool that central banks actually have to control inflation, let me let, me let you in on a big secret here, okay? If serious, really serious about fighting inflation, they're trying to do, which has been completely ineffective for many, many months. They could do this overnight. Oh yeah, yes they could, and I'm going to tell you. Central banks have the power to tell the banks themselves to increase their reserve requirements. In other words, shrink the money supply. Uh, not to raise the alarm any further than they already are raised, but there's also the $300 million just spent by our kind and compassionate socialist bleeding heart liberals on uh, iodine pills for radiated, radiation poisoning, meaning, according to Canadian Prepper, that it's hard to find them. I, you know, there's a very limited supply left because the U.S. government has bought it all up and they're ever uh, vigilant efforts to keep inflation down. I can only imagine what the, they're going to charge for them as they're distributed through the hospitals or however, whatever way you can get ring profit out of the desperate American people needing their medications. They, they seem to have a, a really great uh, ability to foresee those events. Anyway, let's see, what, where else can I go? <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm flabbergasted by a number of things. One of the things I'm really flabbergasted about is that I, 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 I'll ask people just for the heck of it, you know, like, like what do they think of the, the bridge being blown by uh, whoever? What bridge? Bridge? What about the uh, Russian offensive of the last three days in response to the 
you know, it, it escalating offensive over the last three days. There's, I thought we, we were winning the war. We've won the war, haven't we? Isn't it all over? Our, well, we just had the victory celebrations. No, actually, nobody has any response because they don't know that anything exists outside of, you know, the locality where uh, their local social network is plugged into. And that's always plugged into the entertainment world. So I'm sure everybody's up on Tulsi Gabbard leaving the, the, the Democratic Party and all the reasons, therefore, and, and, and what defections lately over uh, from one party to the next in these all important elections that are coming up in November that aren't going to matter a hill of beans given where this government has landed the United States in a two sh two they're two short years that, that seem to have hurtled by like a, a cannonball express into the uh, Rock of Gibraltar, or whatever metaphor you want to use. Well, well meanwhile, there. Let me see if I can find a good report on on where they're going to be spending their time, while the surface dwellers are taking their iodine pills. Or if you're in New York, thanks to the PSA announcements, public service announcements. Thankfully, uh, they've been informed that in the event of a nuclear explosion, all they have to do is get inside their apartment building. Don't go into the car. That's risky. Go inside your apartment building and, and have your bug out bag prepared and then uh, head for the nearest uh, exit, whatever bridge you're closest to, should one happen to still be standing after the nuclear blast. Former military base is now home to the world's largest doomsday community. $35,000 gets you the bunker forever. Hidden in the Black Hills of South Dakota, over 575 underground bunkers cover an area over half the size of Manhattan. Like this one behind me. How long could you survive in here with the supplies that you have? Pretty much we could stay in here if we had to for a year. What do you think the most likely scenario for people actually having to use these bunkers is? Of course, in Las Vegas, you're, the, the lower class is going to be in Black Rock, places like North or South Dakota. The entrance is like four feet tall. And this, this is, is kind of what you would imagine from an underground USA bunker. This is a normal neighborhood. You see track homes that have been here for 20 or 30 years that are all over in this neighborhood. This is a great place to hide if you're in Las Vegas and you know that there's some sort of nuclear explosion that's going to come. But the thing that you came here for is to see what's inside of the $18 million underground bunker in Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's go into the old house and go downstairs and show you how to get inside. two ways to get in. One is the stairwell and the other is an elevator. I'm trying to pull this button. Stop. Okay. We're inside. We're inside the elevator. Look at this. Welcome to Texas Hideaway. Texas Hideaway. Push the button. Door shuts. You have to press the button. Yep. Interesting and very from the Cold War and old. This carpet is the original carpet that has been here since 19... Do you ever think about living in a world where we don't have access to modern medicine anymore? In fact, in 78. And the amazing thing is, is it's, it's just as tacky as Las Vegas itself. You can live there as, as long as you want. And, and the tacky splendor of Las Vegas, complete with fake murals, and fake everything. Fake entertainment, fake news. Sangra Law. Now, uh, I was, when I was living in New Mexico, I said this was going on all over the place. The super rich Sherwin McLean, I saw, I met somebody working on one. They're up above ground working on the, you know, going in and out of one of these underground bunkers. 
it, one wonders, I mean, what they think if there's a devastation going on the, on the surface, the people that built these things know how to get into them, presumably, and they have, they only have to have ventilation, they have to ventilate up to the surface. So that can be easily, unless they're going to have security teams inside, uh, the surface dwellers are going to be, uh, they'll probably just kill them. You know, they'll probably block the vents. Who knows? I mean, this this is a kind of madness that's, that's unimaginable that they be spending millions and millions of dollars in preparation for the... Uh, extinction of the human race above ground. But that's the kind of dystopic, narcissistic, somatic, demonic madness, whatever you want, whatever words you want to put on it. This is quite real. It's not happening in uh, uh, some other alternative sci-fi world. It's happening right here on Earth. And people are voting for it, believe it or not, while they're watching... Uh, their favorite MSNBC or Fox News or di different local affiliates and Washington Post feeding them nonstop propaganda, all within this uh, mad circulating virtual reality madhouse where they imagine that it's a Hollywood movie that's never going to there's, there's never going to be anything like what's being visited on the Ukraine right now or what we've visited on country after country in the Middle East or what's going on in China with riots, food riots, and what's going on in Iran, what's going on with Australian lockdowns. It's going on here at, at a low level right now. But when the uh, economy implodes, which is it's not far away and, and I'm not here to uh, alarm people any more than I'm here to be a watchman on the wall and say this is really going to happen here and without any kind of spiritual preparation for it, which I suggest be a real spiritual preparation, not the Burning Man disco uh, fantasy world of costumery and foolery and boogie woogie nights with, uh, I don't know who's in that, Mark Wahlberg and uh, I don't know, what, whatever their names are. Bill Riley, Bill O'Reilly or William C. Riley or Bill Murray or Bill Gates or Billy Goat, Clinton, or whoever the bills are, you know, the bills are coming due right now. I, I would just uh, vacate the Babylon, and, and I know you can't get out. There, there's nowhere to go on the surface, but there is the interior kingdom. There is the uh, kingdom within. Let me see. Let me do some reading about this. Maybe this will uh, bolster somebody to look into this avenue. A Apprehending God by uh, A.W. Tozer in the, in the Pursuit of God. It was Canon Holmes of India who more than 25 years ago called attention to the inferential character of the average man's faith in God. To most people, God is an inference, not a reality. He is a deduction from evidence, which they consider adequate, but he remains personally unknown to the individual. He must be, they say, therefore we believe he is. Others do not go even so far as this. They know of him only by hearsay. They have never bothered to think the matter out for themselves, but have heard about him from others and have put belief in him into the back of their minds, along with the various odds and ends that make up their total creed. To many others, God is but an ideal, another name for goodness or beauty or truth, or he is law or life or the creative impulse back of the phenomena of existence. That's the pantheist belief or the Buddhist belief or the uh, any number of Gnostic beliefs. 
These notions about God are many and varied, but they who hold them have one thing in common. They do not know God. The personal experience of God is what Tozer is talking about. They don't have a direct relationship with God. It's a mediated experience of God. It's mediated through their church or through their, sermon, their Zoom churches or through their pastors or through their gurus or anybody but, but themselves. Uh, without the aid of chemical substances, I would recommend staying away from the chemical substances. I've been down that road myself, and it's it's a uh, uh, train ride to nowhere. I was lucky to get back from the uh, darkness that drugs take you into, and the dark people that you meet there and then the darkness of insanity that you see so many artists for myself being an artist you see so many artists that, that just crash and burn all, all along the way the ones who survive survive as as zombified wrecks while admitting his existence they do not think of him as knowable in the sense that we know things or people. Christians, to be sure, go further than this, at least in theory. Their creed requires them to believe in the personality of God, and they have been taught to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. Now personality and fatherhood carry with them the idea of the possibility of personal acquaintance. This is admitted, I say, in theory, but for millions of Christians, nevertheless, God is no more real than he is to the non-Christian. They go through life trying to love an ideal and be loyal to a mere principle or a mere social network. This was written in the days before social networks. I don't know if I have a date on it. It's old enough. I would say it was back in the 60s, but that's a... An estimate. Tozer was the, the spiritual mentor of people like David Wilkerson and Leonard Ravenhill. And he lived in Chicago, had a ministry, and, and also in Toronto. Interestingly, this is published in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, but they don't give a, a date or a, or a copyright date or a reprint date. That's okay. It's, it's not, a, a, not a big deal. Over against all this cloudy vagueness stands the clear scriptural doctrine that God can be known in personal experience. A loving personality dominates the Bible, walking among the trees of the garden and breathing fragrance over every scene. Always a living person is present, speaking, pleading, loving, working, and manifesting himself whenever and wherever his people have the receptivity necessary to receive a manifestation. The Bible assumes as a self-evident fact that men can know God with at least the same degree of immediacy as they know any other person or thing that comes within the field of their experience. The same terms are used to express the knowledge of God as are used to express knowledge of physical things. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces. My sheep hear my voice. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. These are but four of countless such passages from the word of God, and more important than any proof text is the fact that the whole import of the scripture is toward this belief. I'll leave it there. God bless everybody and stay safe.